Okay everyone, how are we doing? Friday's video, hello. Uh, thanks for spending a little bit of time with me on your no doubt hectic Friday. We're kicking off with Liel Abada, who is now officially no longer a Celtic player. This was announced in like the last probably five or six hours by Charlotte FC, the MLS side, who have signed him on a contract until 2026 with an option for a further year. Abada will occupy an international roster slot, which is incredibly American. No word from Celtic yet on social media. However, the club did put out a statement last night, um, sincerely wishing Abada the best for the future. Now, despite Abada's relationship with the club um, appearing to go a little sour over uh, recent months, certainly from his point of view, it has seemed that way, he has um, posted a pretty lengthy but well thought out farewell on Instagram. After two and a half incredible years, the time has come to bid farewell. Where do I even begin? Leaving Celtic wasn't in my plans, yet life's unpredictable turns remind us that we're not always in control. The past six months have been a personal challenge, yet the overwhelming support from the gaffer, coaches and board has been my rock. Their unwavering faith during these times won't be forgotten but cherished forever. Reflecting on my journey here brings a smile to my face, the trophies lifted, goals celebrated, electric atmospheres and moments of pure bliss. He's definitely not written this himself, has he? Will forever be etched in my memory. To my teammates and staff, Thank you for pushing me to excel, not just as a player, but as a person. You've all played a pivotal role in shaping who I am today. A special shout out to my family and my girlfriend whose steadfast support and love have been my guiding light. Arriving in a new country at 19 was daunting, but Nero, that's near Beton, and his family welcomed me with open arms, making Scotland feel like home from day one. Their kindness made all the difference on and off the pitch. To the incredible Israeli community in Glasgow, you've given me so much warmth and love. You hold a special place in my heart. And last but not least, thank you to all the Celtic fans. Recent times were very difficult for myself and my family, but I want to say thank you to all the Celtic fans that stood by me, supported and respected me as a Celtic player, and I hope that I have given you a few moments to remember me by. It is now time to begin a new chapter on my journey in a new place and with new targets. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything, Liel. Now, as I say, like obviously someone's written that for him, but that's very understandable given that English isn't his first language. It's an extremely well thought out piece, and it's obviously what he wanted to, to get across. I know it's been a, a very, very, very divisive subject recently. Like when politics come into this kind of thing, um, it often seems to get like that. And I can't remember many subjects that have proven to be so divisive in, in recent Celtic history. Having said that, I think from Abada's point of view, that's a pretty decent and fair assessment from him. I must say I wasn't really expecting... Um, any post from him about leaving Celtic, given you know how he was per perceived to be feeling about the club. But it's clear from what he says there that he still has a, a hell of a lot of love uh, and time for for the club in the years that he he spent. What I would say, you know, I, I hope that it's kept at that. I hope that's how he kind of finishes talking about Celtic in a really positive light, um, because I genuinely believe that virtually every Celtic fan. I've come across as being supportive of Abada personally. You go back to the reaction he got when he came on in the derby. And for him personally, and I emphasise personally, I think the support has, has always been there from, from the Celtic fan base. So I'm glad that he um, he brought that up. And perhaps, maybe slightly reading between the lines, that statement hints at pressure from uh, his homeland as being like quite a tough thing to deal with. Obviously, a lot's been said about Abada during his time at Celtic, so he's probably pretty delighted to be moving away from that into like a, a kind of less pressurised environment in more than one way. We've got a bit of money, not as much as we probably would have got for him in normal circumstances, but we've kind of 
done all right. We've certainly made a big profit on him, and he delivered so many, you know, really big moments. For me, he'll always be associated with the the batterings of Rangers. You know, the the three nil game and the four nil game, both in twenty twenty two. He scored three goals over those two matches, um, and that's I think you know alongside maybe the Dundee United last minute goal. And obviously scoring the first goal of the Ange Postacoglu era in his debut. I think that's probably, you know, where he'll be remembered most for those big derby goals and, and goals that we'll look back on for the rest of our lives. Um and probably in a weird kind of sad way, wish we were, were back in those times. Any excuse for this footage of um his goal against Rangers to resurface? <laughs> Where does the 3 0 win over Rangers rank for you in terms of your your favourite ever Celtic games and a baddest contribution that night, obviously? Um I dare say some of you might be a little bit older than me. Not meaning to offend you out there, but um, you might you might go back a wee bit further than me. But yeah, um a nice way to finish from Abada, both for that goal and uh, also on Instagram. And he had some very nice responses from now former teammates at Celtic. And strangely enough, line of duty Steve Arnott in there as well, bottom left. Um, Jorgis Yakimakis, obviously, who um, plays in the MLS. That's why he's saying welcome, brother. A lot of them saying wee man and little man. So that's clearly how he was known. Um, and Martin Compton, as I say, with the thanks for the memories, traditional thing you say when a, a player leaves. So lots of love there for Lee Labada. A fair bit of sadness as well, uh, I would say, with, with the news of Abada leaving. However, that doesn't go for everyone. There is one person in Glasgow who's extremely delighted. Now, Abada has navigated the Celtic exit quite well, but it is important that he doesn't um, do anything that could be perceived negatively um, by the Celtic support, like no... Um, like bad images or mentions of like, I don't know, playing for the crown or anything daft like, oh. Abad is not even the only exit from Celtic that we have to talk about today. No, they're all leaving. I'm kind of half expecting this mic to stand up and walk out and couple of minutes but um, Alexandro Bernabe has also left the club he is signed as we spoke about yesterday for SC Internacional the Brazilian club they've announced a, a loan sign and it is of Bernabe until the end of 2024 doesn't seem to be a mention of a, a possibility of making that deal permanent but I would guess well, more than guess that it's time at Celtic is up, um, barring some sort of miracle with a new manager giving him fresh hope and him turning into a actually decent player. Yeah, his uh, his time is up. I'm not really going to spend the same amount of time talking about Burnaby uh, as I did with Abada, because Burnaby didn't really offer us a great, you know, amount of moments at the club, to be honest. I mean, Stevie did cover him extensively yesterday. Just a bit of a, a nightmare signing all round. But yeah, wish him all the best in his new uh, endeavour back in South America. And other news, just wee bits of news that you may or may not find interesting. I don't know. Marco Tellio has picked up a, a hamstring injury and could miss up to six weeks with Melbourne City. Uh, Neil Lennon has declared his interest in the Aberdeen job. They've got Neil Warnock in interim charge at the moment. That's going great. But they will be looking for a new manager um, in the summer, at the latest. And Neil Lennon has thrown his hat in the ring. Apparently he was in for the Aberdeen job recently as well. I think when Barry Robson left, however, he had to kind of pull out of it because he was also going for the Republic of Ireland job. Apparently he came very close to getting the, the Ireland gig, but his lack of international experience was what held him back. So I reckon we're going to see Neil Lennon back in Scottish football very soon. I think him at Aberdeen would be a, a very interesting appointment and I think it would actually be a good appointment. He would certainly do a lot better than Neil Warnock is at the moment. So that's one to watch in the summer. 
But we move forward now to Sunday and we're back here, beautiful, glorious Celtic Park, for a 2.30pm kickoff against Livingston. This is one of four Scottish Cup quarterfinals taking place this weekend. There they are. The weekend starts Saturday 12.15, Aberdeen versus Kilmarnock, then a double header on Sunday, our game followed by a, a pretty tasty looking one between Hibernian and Rangers. And then on Monday evening, the ties are concluded with Greenock Morton versus Hearts. So yeah, it's an opportunity for the team this weekend to get back to winning ways after the disappointment against Hearts last weekend. Let's be honest, they've got a lot of um, experience of having to get back to winning ways this season, so this should be no um, problem for them. It's a relatively forgiving tie. Livingston are a top-flight team. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case for too much longer, and most importantly, it is a home game. So, yeah, we've actually got two home games coming up before the, the international break, Livingston on Sunday, St. Johnson the following weekend. Not had many home games recently, so it's an opportunity for the team to maybe get a wee bit of momentum going into the break. We have to win both of them. Like, if we don't win both of them, then it's going to be a bit of a disaster. So, yeah, it's um, it's a game this weekend. And Brendan Rodgers probably has a few decisions to make. We know we'll be without Yang, first game of his suspension. Um, yeah, we'll be out with Ka- without Cal McGregor as well. I'm, I'm almost certain that would be the case. So... Yeah, what does he do in that midfield, especially when Kyogo came on at, at Tynecastle at half time? And I thought did quite well. Yes, he maybe lacked a bit of conviction in the final third, as everyone did, but I thought he looked really lively. And maybe back to the old Kyogo, maybe, even though he wasn't necessarily darting in behind. Will Rogers put him back in that kind of midfield position that he played for, you know, a couple of matches and in the last round of the cup at St. Mirren? Because obviously there's a wing berth available as well with, with Yang missing the game. This is a team that I have gone for. Um, Joe Hart in goal, back four of Alistair Johnson, Cameron Carter-Vickers, Liam Scales and Greg Taylor, who's basically the only left back at the club now. We've got Tomoki Awata in midfield. Matt O'Reilly, assuming he is well enough to play suggestions that he wasn't in tip-top condition last week. I've gone for Kyogo in midfield. It's kind of like a midfield attacking role, isn't it? It's not like the exact role that someone like Hatati would play, but it's not a forward role either. Uh, and then front three, obviously, Ida spearheading the attack, Maida on the right, Palma on the left. I wouldn't be against either Daniel Kelly or Rocco Vata being um, put into the team. For this one, I think Daniel Kelly could be a possibility. I mean, Rodgers has played him the last couple of games, talked him up a hell of a lot, and that midfield is kind of open at the moment. Bernardo didn't take his chance last week. I don't know if he would start after that performance last week. I would rather Daniel Kelly in, to be honest. Let's see what he's made of. But Rodgers, as I say, also, I think, has to try and find a way to get Kyogo and Ida in that team together. I think they both have to play. Could he go two up front? I don't know. So yeah, we just have to really show up for the fight on on Sunday. It's been um, it's been a really noisy week media wise, hasn't it? I mean, great for me and and you, like being able to chat about all these things. But for the team, there's been a lot happening, and no football played since last Sunday. We're not going to have another game until you know next week. So it's like this can get our full attention. Um, and hopefully the players are just bursting to to put in a performance and make us kind of all feel good again. Because, you know, getting through to a semi-final of the, the Scottish Cup is, is no mean feat and hopefully then we can kick on. So, hoping for a victory, but hoping for a really kind of encouraging performance as well. I should say, by the way, just in case you, you were wondering, a draw for the the uh, both the men's Scottish Cup and the women's Scottish Cup will take place on Monday evening, live on BBC Scotland. Women's ties will be drawn at half-time of the live Morton versus Hearts match. Well, the men's ties will be drawn at full time. Obviously, I'll be doing a video on Monday morning prior to that, but just in case you were wondering. Right, have a good weekend. Hopefully Celtic continue that on Sunday, and I'll chat to you on Monday.